I don't, Maybe I don't because think it's like, do, do we know it's directly caused because women, because of feminism? I mean, I think studies are all fake anyway. Causation. But if you look at all of these happiness surveys, such as they are, the big change that happened in the relations between men and women is the advent of feminism. And it made. So feminism bad because the study says so, but by the way, I think the study's lying? What? I tell you, man, it's these people, by the way, that say trans people live in delusion. This is delusion right here. Believing that somehow you, Michael Knowles, you, you insignificant peasant with your tiny little pea brain, somehow just know better than every major institution around the f***ing globe. We are the two most POC colored people yes. disabled, and What's you can sit and have this conversation and laugh and giggle and have funny times. This is not anything funny but, to but us right now. Yeah, please. Do it, please. No, now she just pulled out the I'm a brown girl card. Uh, uh, okay, this is, by the way, why I said that uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to have some not very smart girls on here. Now, Michael Knowles recently went on this podcast hosted by whatever. It's called the uh, Whatever Podcast. And uh, yeah, Michael Knowles was on it. It goes for five hours. I'm going to tell you right now, we're... <laughs> We're not going to, uh, we're not going to go over all five hours, okay? We're probably just going to skip around a little bit for a, a little bit and then be done with this because first of all, it's Michael Knowles. He's like an insufferable piece of shit. And then you have five hours. It's like, I, I didn't sign up for cruel and unusual punishment, okay? But anyway, let's, uh, l let's jump in. Which one do we want to pick first? Yeah, because I was no. just sort of wondering if you happen to be more left wing, if you find yourself attracted to the, the, someone who has all these stereotypically right wing characteristics yeah, like gun ownership or whatever. I, I feel like, no, go ahead. I, Warning, this is also very much a like a, a fresh and fit thing. I haven't seen too much of this, but it's my understanding that they bring on like some pretty dumb girls to then get like dunked on by Michael Knowles. Um, hopefully, ladies, you can prove me wrong, but uh, I think I've seen a couple clips and it hasn't looked so so great. I'm more I'm left leaning. Seeing. I wouldn't consider myself a Democrat, mm -hmm. um, but I usually am more attracted to more right wing people if anything what do you think that is good question um i don't know oh i know where they're going with this they're gonna be like because they're more masculine right <laughs> when you see a bulge in a conservative woman's pants it's a gun when you see a bulge in a liberal girl's pants it's a penis I really thought about it it's a good question. we have time <laughs> <laughs> oh wonderful uh, <laughs> can i come back just really quick, you have got to go and check out my brand new merch. Head on over to HunterAvalon.live now. I have amazing new graphics. I have gay mice graphics. I have minimalist graphics. I have hoodies or long sleeve t-shirts. I have all over print t-shirts, water bottles, mugs, even stickers. Everything you could possibly want is on HunterAvalon.live. And for a limited time, enter promo code FRESH at the checkout to get free shipping on every order. Because I, I would have guessed that. I would guess would that guessed most that. women, even if they say I'm liberal or I'm left wing, ultimately, especially if you're thinking for a guy more long term, but even in the short term, you're probably not attracted to some guy who's like wearing dresses or is super like makes you pay the check or is kind of, you know, is that like, like what left wing guys are to, the, to, to Michael Knowles? Yep. That's us, guys. That's me right here. Soy boy over here. I always make my wife take the check. I always wear dresses. I'm wearing some of her panties right now. Like, does he think this is what most average liberal guys are like? It's so funny. Also, what's even funnier is whether or not uh, women want a liberal guy or a right wing guy. The truth of the matter is relationships where both partners are treated equally are the most successful relationships. And I'm sorry, but you have a much better chance at receiving equal treatment from a liberal guy than you would from the conservative guy who believes that God ordained him as the authority of the household and you must submit to him. Like, just, just saying, okay? So a liberal guy would probably ultimately be more likely to treat you equally, okay? And marriages in which the partners treat each other equally are the most successful marriages. They have a way lower likelihood of divorce. They have better sex. They have a better overall relationship. <clears throat> I could see where you are going with that, though, and why people who believe the same things as you would see that. Um, it's just for me, since I said I am left-leaning, not fully a Democrat, I don't. I find myself, yeah, not fully agreeing with a lot of things. Um, 
that a lot of like full Democrats believe. Whereas I always I don't always believe things that full conservatives believe, but we'll find a middle ground easier than I will with the really really democratical people. So just say you don't like so- soy boys. <clears throat> just or maybe you do. I don't know. Maybe you do. I mean I really couldn't say that since like I've dated girls, so it's like. Mm. Hmm. That's Michael like, Knowles is like, oh no, we're dealing with a bisexual here. Oh, look at his eyes. That's, oh no. How did I get such a perfect freeze frame here? I'm going to play it again, I promise. But like, whenever I, I see a picture like this, I, all I can think is like, when you come, but she keeps sucking. <laughs> or maybe for Michael Knowles, it should be when you come, but he keeps sucking. Status too. But so. I still feel like, I I mean, personally, he doesn't do it for me, but I know a lot of girls who do like him. And Harry like, Styles Timothy slides into your DMs. Tim Very Shal- feminine looking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But just because they wear dresses doesn't make, I mean, what makes them feminine? Um, I he feel said like, the dress thing. But, but, <laughs> but also the soy boy. But like, yeah. Timothy right. should, yeah. like, he, like, he yeah. seems yeah. very, he doesn't seem like super, like, you know, gym rap, yeah. masculine, like, no. big, mm-hmm. big guy. No, they're very, like, skinny, slender. scrawny, like, slender men. Like, I feel like. Feminine fat features. Yes. yes. And they're very, like, soft. They mm-hmm. come off soft, not like someone who's very strong and aggressive. And I feel like a lot of times women find that attractive. I think younger women tend to find more feminine men, a bit more attractive. But It's so weird that it's it's always like this either or thing. Like there are probably qualities of the more masculine, quote, quote, masculine men that you like. And there's probably qualities of the more liberal men that you like. You probably appreciate the way that a liberal man is far more likely to treat you with respect. You probably appreciate that a conservative man is more likely to... Um, I don't know, have a gun or something? Like, I don't, I don't even know. It, it just seems so silly to be like, no this, no that, soy boy, masculine man, no. Like, you probably want a guy who's going to be um, kind to you, treat you with respect, but also have some stamina, have a backbone, stand up for what he believes, all of which are completely possible, whether or not you're a conservative or a liberal. Really quick on the women finding feminine men more attractive. And Michael, maybe you've heard of this. I've heard that women who take birth control uh, tend to, and I, maybe it's something with how the hormones are changing them, um, tend to find men with more feminine character characteristics attractive hmm. when they're on. I'm looking this up. Do women on birth control, although we found no evidence that preferences for masculine men differed between Women using and not using oral contraceptives. Our analysis suggests that women using oral contraceptives showed stronger preferences for feminine women. That took a curveball. Our data do not support the hypothesis that oral contraceptive use is associated with weakened preferences for masculinity in male faces. The current study's null result for oral contraceptive use and masculinity preference adds to a growing body of evidence challenging the claim that women's preferences for exaggerated sexual Uh, dimorphism in men are related to their reproductive hormones. So given the relatively small samples used in previous studies, investigating associations between masculinity preferences and oral contraceptive use, we compared the facial masculinity preferences of women using oral contraceptives and women not using oral contraceptives in a large online sample of 6,482 heterosexual women. We found no evidence that women using oral contraceptives had a weaker preferences for male facial masculinity than women not using oral contraceptives. That's study one proving you wrong. Maybe this is what they're talking about? Women who used computers to design their ideal man saw a change in their preferred facial features after going on the pill. Da-da-da, several experiments. The first, they gave young straight women the ability to digitally alter images for male faces. In the second study, volunteers were asked to rate the manliness of men in relationships on their mug shots. Half of these men were dating women who had been on the pill when they first met. The women's ideal of attractiveness in a potential romantic partner skewed significantly less masculine. They were far more likely, for example, to prefer narrower jawbones and rounder faces. These preferences appear to translate to real-life decisions. The men whose partners had been on the pill when they first started dating were found as a whole to be less masculine-looking. Because this one was from 2013, so I'm seeing two different studies or three articles publishing the same study from 2013. But then it looks like newer information comes out that really challenges it. Taking the pill does not make women less attracted to rugged men. Study debunks the myth that contraception draws females to feminine faces. Mind you, this is from Daily Mail, so we're not exactly on like feminism.com slash men suck. We're on like a pretty conservative website. Professor Benedict Jones from the University of Glasgow said, we found no evidence that changes in hormone levels influence the type of men women find attractive. 
Women judged the attractiveness of a rugged man with features such as a square jaw. The same images were altered to look more feminine with narrower eyebrows and noses. Women find rugged men appealing for short-term relationships. This study is noteworthy for its scale and scope. Previous studies typically examined small samples of women using limited measures. With larger sample sizes and direct measures of hormonal status, we weren't able to replicate effects of hormone on women's preferences for masculine faces. Results further suggest women generally rate masculine faces as more attractive in the context of a short-term rather than an ongoing relationship. Women's preferences in male ruggedness does not vary according to the hormone levels of different birth control pills. So this one was done. The researchers analyzed 584 heterosexual female volunteers. The women were quizzed, blah, blah, blah. To obscure the objective of the study, the women were also asked filler questions, being seeing the different faces. They also provided saliva samples for hormone analysis. The findings were published in the journal Psychological Science. So now we have two different studies, one conducted of over 6,000 people, which was done online, and one that was done on over 500 people that was done in person where they also analyzed hormones. And they found that actually, no, birth control had no effect on the type of men that women found attractive. So you have one 2013 study with a teeny fucking sample size that's been not only challenged to a large extent, I would argue it's almost been debunked because far better studies have proven that fact to be not a fact. All right, let's go over here now to feminism made women miserable. Well, but if you measure happiness, which again is a very difficult thing to do, but you just take people's measures of happiness, both men and women have declined, but women have declined since at when? a faster rate since, since the 70s. Because we live on since the internet, feminism. probably. Everything. Feminism was around before the 70s, but a well-known 2009 study found that American women's self-reported happiness had fallen in the decades since the 1970s, even as the gender equality movement made important strides. Yeah, but like, could that not be attributed to the fact that more women are now involved in the workforce? And it's my understanding that entering the workforce in general is far more likely to cause uh, a decrease in happiness. Women are always and everywhere more unhappy than men. The authors explain that the female happiness paradox emerged in part because of the types of questions researchers ask. If surveys ask men and women about how satisfied they are with their lives, trends may vary depending on where they live, the year, or even the season. By contrast, if you look at unhappiness metrics, sadness, anxiety, depression, loneliness, women are less happy than men. Sociologists have long argued that women who work outside the home have the added burden of taking care of the uh, home after work hours. The second shift, quote, described in 1990 book, Wolfer found no connection between women working outside the home and the decline of their happiness levels over time. Uh-oh, I'm taking an L right here. I just said I thought it was because of the workforce, but at least this one didn't find that. In fact, he says, pointing to a 2007 study, both men's and women's combined working hours at home and on the job have decreased over the past few decades. It appears that our results cannot be explained by one simple social phenomenon. Uh-oh, you know what that means, right? You can't just say, women happy then, women not happy now. So feminism bad. Ooh, ooh, hee, hee. You don't actually get to do that. Studies on declining happiness in women probably reflect something more subtle than simple work overload. It's not the quantity of work that makes women unhappy, she says, but the added pressure to maintain strong social ties at home and at work. For example, women are still expected to spend more time with their kids than men, despite the fact that they work more hours out of the house than previous generations. Women are socialized to believe that they are in charge of emotional affairs. When they can't meet expectations, they become stressed. That's also true, and I know this is backed up by data. Another reason why we see happiness rates in general decreasing is actually because people have less friends. When people were face-to-face -face and friendly with their neighbors, for example, happiness was at a higher level. Now, not so much. People are inside on the fucking internet all day, every day. People are not just overworked, but people are expected. Women in general, it seems, according to this anyway, are expected specifically to manage emotional affairs at home and also work. And that's a lot of pressure. So yeah, that can absolutely affect whether or not you feel happy. 2009 book describes a parallel tendency among teenage girls and young women. His research shows that rates of depression, suicide, and self-destructive behaviors uh, have all risen among girls over the last two decades. The cause, he believes, is the feeling of failure girls experience when they don't measure up to impossible cultural standards. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Are you saying the reason that women's happiness is actually decreasing is because of sexism? Because of sexist ideas that women must have the perfect figure and be in shape and eating too much as a woman is bad and you're fat and all this shit? Oh, no. Well, I thought feminism was the cause, Michael. No, actually, it turns out feminism aims to benefit women by trying to undo some of these negative social expectations that are contributing to the depression rates of girls and young women. Curious.
Turns out that it's actually sexism to blame, not feminism. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you for the answer there. Uh, science-based insight from berkeley.edu. Thank you, berkeley.edu. Thing is so on the internet. I mean, you've Busy declined since at when? a faster rate since, since the 70s. Because we live on since the internet, feminism. probably. Everything is so Good on the point. internet. I mean, you've, you watch the, the internet, TV, though. you think you're going to die. I don't, Maybe I don't because, it's like, do, do we know it's directly caused because women, because of feminism? I mean, I think studies are all fake anyway. Causation. But if you look at all of these happiness surveys, such as they are, the big change that happened in the relations between men and women is the advent of feminism. And it made. W- wait, does anybody else notice the massive contradiction here? Michael thinks all studies are fake, but he's citing a study to prove his point. So feminism bad because the study says so, but by the way, I think the study's lying? What? I tell you, man, it's these people, by the way, that say trans people live in delusion. This is delusion right here. Believing that somehow you, Michael Knowles, you, you insignificant peasant with your tiny little pea brain, somehow just know better than every major institution around the fucking globe. Michael was just born with that kind of narcissistic personality. No, I'm sorry. A uh, big brain, haha. <laughs> and so he somehow just knows more, you know? All the studies are fake regardless of methodology, regardless of what institution carries out the study, regardless of whether or not bias was actually present in the study. Very, very curious, Michael. I had no idea you were actually God. Women, surveys such as they are, the big change that happened in the relations between men and women is the advent of feminism, and it made women completely miserable. Probably because they like, became more eye-opened and realized, whoa, my life. He's trying to make a, a causal argument based on nothing but correlation. Anybody could do this. Anybody could attribute this to anything else. Uh, I don't know. Think of something. Hey guys, you know about climate change, right? Conveniently, as the temperature began rising from the 1970s, you can look at surveys and women's happiness has gone down. Clearly this is to blame. Climate change is at fault here. You can't just look at a real problem and then give it a fake reason. Feminism, and it made women completely miserable. Probably because they like became more eye-opened and realized, whoa, my life is shit when you do something That's about exactly it. what happened. It, what they would do, they, in the New York radical women's groups, these happy women who had good husbands and families would show up happy, I'm not even joking, and they would go through these struggle sessions and they would raise their consciousness and they would leave miserable. And, and uh, this happened again and again at these meetings, and that's what happened to the So we should just keep women blind to the fact that they face sexist issues in society? so they'll be happier? Is this actually the ignorance is bliss argument? Listen, the only ignorance that is bliss is when I was ignorant of the existence of Michael Knowles. Life was better then. A whole society over the last like so 60 like, years. So like, wait, isn't this the same thing as like, the ma- ignorance is bliss? Yeah, I feel like they were ignorant mm-hmm. before. They opened their eyes from the I matrix mean, yeah. or whatever, whatever those, the pill. That's what the feminists say. But yeah. no, I think they actually were much better adjusted to reality before. And then they were told a bunch of lies by the feminists reality about their nature. They yeah, were. they were so much better off and they were told that their place in society was just being a baby maker. Yeah. Controlling their own lives and everything was dictated were, by their husband. Yeah, and, yeah. When, before when, when they believed that men and women are complementary and actually made, made for one another and that actually we have responsibilities and obligations and not just entitlements to do whatever the hell we want. And then after yeah, they... Mo- uh, uh, there you go, by the way. Responsibilities, obligations. He would say that women have an obligation to fulfill the gender role that they need to adhere to. The struggle sessions with all the feminists, they were told a lie, which is that men and women are not complementary, but they're indiscernible, basically identical. Woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. And they were told a lie that they would be much more fulfilled not working for the good of their husband and children, but instead going out but and looking for Mr. McGill Cuddy, the guy who doesn't care about them at all. So also- can- Did anybody actually say that, by the way? Was that ever like a thing? Like, hey, ladies, you'll be more fulfilled if you instead go get a job at the local McDonald's as a manager. Don't have babies. Have a Big Mac. When the fuck was this going on, Michael? I'm pretty sure for most people it was do what you want to do. If you want to be a stay-at-home mom, that's fine. But the fact that women were oftentimes relegated to being a stay-at-home mom, regardless of what they actually desired to do in life, is a bad thing. For feminism, I feel before it was just no. hidden. They would, they, yes, men, no, yes. No. yes, men could cheat on wives so much more sex. easily. No. Because we're because allowed sex without marriage, that's why people don't want to marry anymore. Bingo. Okay, Bingo. I understand how the... <laughs> Did she say because we're allowed? Can we go back? Easily, no. Because we're because allowed sex without marriage, that's why people don't want to marry anymore. Bingo. That's not even true. You can look up why marriage rates have declined, and it's because actually men are not uh, progressing as quickly as they used to. There's far more single men living at home with their parents. Men who are at home, who don't have their own place, who are still living with their parents, tend to have the, the least amount of sex relative to married men, etc., etc. 
women's amount of sex they're having hasn't actually really changed all that much. Marriage does not take place if a man still lives at home. This is a problem with men lacking mobility in certain contexts, which is a real problem that men face that needs to be addressed. But then this crazy psycho comes along and goes, because we're allowed sex without marriage, just say you have a punishment kink. Just say you have like a daddy kink and get off the fucking internet. We don't need you here chiming in, going all yippity ya ya about, well, because we're allowed sex, all I need is a big, powerful man to control me. Okay, I understand hookup culture is a problem, but when there wasn't hookup culture, men were allowed and they had this freedom of being like to cheat on their wives and to get away with it. There were and even laws against adultery and fornication. Yeah, but no one would care. They would just turn a blind eye. No one would- It's true, actually. I believe that it, was it fornication? Maybe it wasn't, actually. I think, so back, there was a little while where like uh, domestic violence was treated as just that, a domestic problem. It wouldn't actually be prosecuted by the law. Same thing with child molestation, by the way. Thankfully, that has changed. My God, I I don't know if that was enforced or not in regards to adultery, but I wouldn't be surprised if that also was seen as, well, more of a domestic problem that you kind of turn a blind eye to. It seems as though most anti-adultery laws have been struck down gradually uh, as they are unconstitutional and state criminal laws against adultery are rarely enforced. I'll have to look up uh, what it was like back in back in the good old days. The good old days when you could just slap a hoe around without needing to worry about the goddamn police getting involved. Bring me back. Return to tradition. Men are not women. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what God said? It said he made the man and women. He made the man and women. He actually said man, women, and them. So. No, he said God created the male and female. He said male and female. So them. So there's them. They them. No, the them refers to the men and the women. No, but he says them. So it's like they them. He was referring to both of them. But he said them, so he's like, No, it was male and female. God made them male and female. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. God made them male and female, male and female, male and female. I'm seeing only male and female here. So we're talking about sexual characteristics. And I mean, uh, it's true that sex is bimodal, but it's also true that there is largely two sides to that overall spectrum, I guess. Yes, there is a lot of variation there, but we generally recognize like male and female as like the main side of that spectrum. So basically, God made them male and female, which I mean, in many ways is true. Okay, fine. Male and female, that's sex. That's not gender. Wrecked. And in them, so he- No, 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 he said, said, in the beginning, God created man. Both male and female created he them. Them. Yeah, these are the types of- So while other countries are planning to invade us with debating they, them, the whole- I mean, (laughs) when you refer to multiple people- Oh, no. Don't- don't, okay, don't try to go that route. Don't try to be like, the Bible, well, it actually says he created them. So, ha, huh, like that, come on. That, what does that even mean? You're just like twisting the words there. It generally sounds like you don't understand grammar. Well, you say them, right? Or you could be referring to they thems. It's English. They thems don't <laughs> exist. <laughs> I, 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 ah, gotcha. Okay, so not only has Michael Knowles uh, determined that all studies are fake, he also has now determined that non-binary people are false, in fact. Wow, man. You know, I really wish Michael Knowles would tell me that racism was fake because I really hate racism. You know, all my homies hate racism. I want to see it gone. If only Michael Knowles would just tell me that racism is not here anymore. And yeah, uh, obviously, all kidding aside, they, them can be used singular. It oftentimes is used singular. (laughs) So the fact he would even say this is is laughable at best. Uh, It's actually fucking mind numbing at worst. I do believe there's people who are, I don't know if it's ambiguous or what it is, there's people who were born in their wrong gender, there's people who are mm-hmm. born and they don't feel like they fit in either box. Do I think people are born that believe they're cats and stuff? No, yeah. I don't believe that shit, no. There are Do people I believe- who think that. <gasps> Can we get a massive thumbs down, please? I have been informed by Twitter.com, as you all know, that uh, refusing to validate xenogenders is the same thing as being like a transphobic, conservative Adolf Hitler spawn. So let's make sure that we give this girl a, a heap ton of backlash now. Holy shit, listen to that transphobic bullshit. Can you believe she just said that you can't identify as a cat? What's next? Is she going to try to invalidate the gender identity of an attack helicopter? Because remember, according to Twitter.com, if somebody says they actually identify as an attack helicopter, uh, well, you're supposed to now respect that. They're box. Do I think people are born that believe they're cats and stuff? No, no. I don't believe that shit. No. <laughs> there are do people I believe, who think that, though. I, okay, do I, I'm saying no, I don't. I'm not saying that's correct, but there, I haven't seen anything to back that up. But I just... So the, why, the fact that you guys, why? What do you, how do you think it would go if I was able to explain that about like how I was able to explain like what gender is the way it's first a, a socially constructed thing 
and how that influences an internal perception. And that's what ultimately leads to um, people having gender identities and, and whatnot. And the reason you can't identify with a ca- as a cat is because cat is just by definition not a gender. It falls nowhere on that spectrum. Whereas even non-binary people, they are largely in like the center, I guess, if they don't fit in either side. But like a cat isn't on that spectrum. So how can it be a gender? Like, I wonder how it would go if I was able to just explain, if I was able to just be there. I feel like I would be the, the guy who would be, um, I'd be the mansplainer on the panel. I'd be like, shut up, ladies, okay? Let a man handle this one. All you bitches don't know what the fuck you're talking about, okay? Stop rambling and listen up. So gender, it is socially constructed, and then just like go off. In anyone's right mind, would somebody go from, like Bruce Jenner, for example, Caitlyn Jenner, now yeah. for example. Did you just say his name? Successful athlete, Olympian, whatever, all this stuff. Had a, was married to Chris Jenner, had the fucking life of whatever. Unless she truly believed that and felt that deep inside of her core, she ultimately ruined her life for basically a whole decade. Yeah, he became he became much more relevant and famous than he was. I, I highly... For a very brief time, not to mention she is also a fucking Republican now. Highly Obviously, disagree. He was, on, he was on magazine covers. Well, Everybody was talking about him. More talking he's about been him. on magazine covers. She's an Olympian. That's not... She's but not on... Tra- he, she's not he was an Olympian many decades trans. ago. No, but he, exactly. was on, he was on a magazine cover for the first time in decades. But after she came out well. as a transgender, she got way more hate. Exactly. And, her, and she got... The, the only thing worse... It's just that she was a public figure. She came out as transgender. She was one of the first really public figures to actually come out, which just increased her overall relevance. So that means that that increased the positive response and also increased the negative response. How many people mocked Caitlyn Jenner? That, that, that was like a huge thing. I even remember in my conservative days making fun of Caitlyn Jenner, okay? That, that was like the meme, the thing. They just rose to relevance for a little bit and now they're kind of not really very relevant. <laughs> Being talked about is not being but she probably made more money. But, but no, she, <laughs> okay, she lost so a take lot away, of relationships. Okay. But the re- Sorry, the reason he take away that, Caitlyn Jenner. You know take, okay, no, hold on, hold on. Put on, put on your, your basic day-to-day person, okay? You're not going to like this one, okay? <laughs> I, no, not you. <laughs> you, for example, okay? There's people like you who are super conservative, Handsome. write interviews and stuff, and then... <laughs> They wake up and, then, and they want to be a woman. <laughs> and it's, but is it because they just woke up and want to be a woman or is it because they finally found the courage to well, come out with something probably. they've been suppressing their whole lives? I just don't understand why you guys think somebody would risk... Like, yes, yeah, I'm sure be, some people can benefit from coming out with trans, but most people do not benefit from that. So why would somebody... I mean, what about even people in other countries where you could be killed for being trans? I mean, you see people who are trans even then. And one other thing is if it was purely a social thing and had nothing to do with an internal view of yourself, then... Why is it that there are people who are trans right now who were raised in incredibly Christian, strict environments where trans people were either not talked about at all, or if they were, it was only in a negative context? Obviously, there's something deeper there in regards to gender. Trans, especially black trans people. Because they have a sexual fetish. Also, why does it bother you? How does that have anything to do with a sexual fetish? What? Huh? I'm just so aroused by everybody calling me the tea slur on Twitter. Oh, yes, daddy. So why does it bother complex. people? Because it isn't true. But why does like, it bother you? It's that, not yeah. harming you. It's not hurting anyone. Well, it's like, harming society So do you go around, do you go around finding people who think- This is a bad think- fucking approach to take. Oh, it's not harming you. Like, uh, if it's false, it's false. You don't get to say it's not harming you. Like, you know, it also doesn't harm me that some people believe the world is flat, but I can still say it's false. Like, y- you should challenge Michael on whether or not it's false. Not just, oh, it doesn't affect you. Because that just gives him an easy- avenue to then explain how, well, actually, transgenderism agenda is weighing down our children. As you know, my good friend, Matt Walsh, has educated us that the trans Hitlers are massacring six million children a day to the transgender ideology. So it is actually affecting me. If we pushed onto children. Yeah, well, it's obviously pushed onto children. We're castrating children left and right, which is insane. But also, if there, if we accept transgenderism at all, even for one single adult person, that means that certain things will change in society. Women don't get to have Maybe their own bathrooms. Maybe things need anymore. to change. Women don't get to have, well, perhaps, but at least one could have the debate. Women don't get to have their own bathrooms. Women don't get to have their own sports teams. Women don't get to have their own specific rights and places in society. Protections in civil rights law, they lose that because some men can say that they're women. So it seems to me the obvious question to ask is not, well, what does it matter to you? Who re- See, this is what conservatives do so frequently. And now, granted, Michael Knowles is a little bit better here, at least because, well, she said it wasn't affecting him. And now he's trying to argue that. But I feel like the general conversation regarding trans people, especially with conservatives, is almost entirely a red herring. You know, Michael, even if you're correct that it's bad that uh, trans women are intruding on the cis women's spaces, 
<gasps> Does that mean trans women are fake? Does it mean they're invalid? Does it like it literally doesn't follow? The same thing happens with the fucking sports conversation. Oh, they're intruding on the the women's sports. Oh, even if you believe that, does that mean trans people aren't valid? Does that mean trans people are, are fake? No, of course not. It's a red herring. It's a distraction from the actual conversation that needs to take place about the validity of trans people. Really cares. First of all, the people pushing this seem to care a lot. But the question to ask is, is it true? Are these men who say that they're women actually women? Or are they men who are confused or who have weird sexual fetishes or have disordered desires? Gender-wise, they are. Of how would you have a sexual fetish? That's what I don't get. It's Biologically, the they're not. So What's gender, the difference? There's, the difference is like science, and then the other difference is like how you feel in your head, and the way you are in society. There's a huge difference. The difference is like the chromosomes and then your mentality. Okay, so mm -hmm. if there's a dis disagreement between your what you're saying is your physical self and your, uh, uh, your uh, emotional self, your yes. psychological self, then why would you not just change your mind? If the options are chop up your body to make your go through gruesome... <laughs> The, the reason why, by the way, is because you can't, you can't really change the brain. Like we, we've already seen, well, that's not true. Let me rephrase that. Obviously you can change the brain. However, most available research suggests that when we're talking about like trans women, for example, their brain operates in similar patterns or lights up in certain ways, the same way that cis women's brains do. But there's also the conversation about neuroplasticity, right? Maybe these are trans people who have surrounded themselves with more uh, feminine stereotypical items or whatnot. And so that has kind of led to their brain adapting and evolving to be more uh, accepting of these feminine things rather than cliche masculine things, maybe. But you're right, guys. Michael Knowles' overall thing is just like, get over it. It's a lot harder to, like, how do you just change your mind about who you see yourself as? Like, you don't just change your fucking mind. So in that case, when we're talking about something like gender, which is obviously a fundamental uh, core element of someone's identity, then in that regard, it is easier to change the body to be in line with the brain rather than change the brain to be in line with the body. Last but not least, how would you go about changing the mind, Michael, to be in line with the body? Let me guess, there would be counseling, quote, involved, right? Would there maybe be some, quote, therapy involved, Michael? Therapy where they, uh, I don't know, like try to convert people who say they're trans back to being cis? I can't quite put my finger on that. What is it again? Oh, right. It's called fucking conversion therapy and it's banned in every single Western country because it does not work. There is no definitive evidence that conversion therapy actually works. There is definitive evidence that conversion therapy is horrible, miserable, and abusive towards the people that have actually undergone such torturous treatment. Just change your mind, bruh. We tried that. Michael, we tried it, okay? We tried it for a while. And guess what? Didn't work out. So now we need to have a new solution. I know for you, it's like, ooh, ooh, ha, ha, use a rock, crush, seed. Poof, poof. Like for you being very simple, this is probably like a complex thing for you, or it's easier to think like, why don't we just go back to monk and live in caves? Ooh, ooh, ooh. But in reality, we tried the conversion therapy thing, okay? We tried your solution. It didn't work. Be dead, then live in the lie but anymore. The, but the it, problem, it, it's if, getting to. If you bring up like suicidality, there is no evidence that having these surgeries and pretending to be the opposite sex reduces any of mm -hmm. that whatsoever. Why do they keep lying about this? Do they actually just cite the one Swedish study where it showed in that regard that there wasn't a decrease? Even though the study also said gender affirming surgery was beneficial in alleviating gender dysphoria, it just wasn't enough to entirely alleviate the gender dysphoria. Why do you guys always cling to that one exact fucking study? You can tell it's like the one study they have. I feel like Michael Knowles has it like printed out and just cuddles with it in bed. Although there is that one study from the Swedish study, which is true, it didn't find a decrease in suicidality. However, there are other studies that have very clearly and conclusively demonstrated that when trans people receive these surgeries, compared to trans people who did not receive these surgeries, their suicidality goes down. The reason you didn't see the suicidality go down, per se, in the Swedish study was because you were comparing them to the general society. After gender-affirming surgery, suicidality decreases relative to trans people who have not yet received that surgery. The suicide rate still remains higher than the general population, largely due to social reasons, discrimination, etc. So this is just a lie, Michael. You're a liar. Thank you for reminding me, chat. I thought studies were fake, Michael. Why are you bringing up a study, dude? Why are you citing the fake news woke media? But you know what we're talking about? When you're talking about this, this weird species of prostitute in Thailand. Weird species of prostitute. Yes. You don't understand how that sounds. You know, that sounds precise.
No, it doesn't sound precise. It sounds like when you're referring to other human beings as a species, like a, like as if they are not human beings. Uh, that's usually the problem there, Mike. Uh, Mike. <laughs> okay, Mike Wazowski. Yeah, I'm sick of the gender talk. Let's uh, let, let's skip over to the racism one. So just really quick to put kind of maybe a chair on, on top of that. How do you define racism? Um, I hate doing this off the top of my head. Um, Why is this so difficult for progressives? Oh my God. This is like the easiest motherfucking question. What? Define racism. Uh, yeah, it's treating people poorly on the basis of their race or viewing yourself as superior to other people on the basis of your race. Why is this like so hard for people to fucking define? There's racism and then there's systemic racism. If you're asked to define racism, most people are thinking of what would technically be like prejudice, interpersonal discrimination and racism. But when we're talking about systemic racism, well, that's why it's systemic racism because it's different. Let yeah. me come back to that question. To Do you that. think you can be racist against white people? No. You could be, dis I think you could be dis I feel like you could Hold on, I want to go around the table on this before no, I- Please, no, Michael no. Harrison. What about you? No. No, so, so no. can't be racist against white people? I think people. you can discriminate against them or- you Guys, just don't. Just don't do this. This is not a bullet that any motherfucking liberal left-leaning person needs to, to bite. Just, yes, you can be racist towards white people, okay? If you walk up to your white friend and say that, hey, dude, you're a piece of shit and call them a slur on the base of their race, that's racist. Can we stop with the whole, like, well, actually, <laughs> racism is when it's the combination of the systemic structures along with being carried out by those in power to affect minority groups. Like, just shut the fuck up. Racism, people are usually thinking about like, yeah, that guy across the street that called a black kid a slur. I don't know. Most people think of interpersonal racism. When you're talking about systemic racism or institutional racism, then is your chance to bring up the larger problems at play. I think that white people are rarely victims of systemic racism, but saying you can't be racist towards white people is fucking bullshit. That's stupid. You can, in fact, be racist towards white people. You can be, be prejudiced, prejudiced against but, them, but, you but can't be racism racist. comes from a place of, like, someone having less power over someone else. Or more power over okay, so power but if, a, if, no. a, if white people right now can be discriminated. Yeah, and then what, does that only apply in a broad statistical element? Or, like, so what if, what if, like, Will Smith says that I'm a dumb white person or something? Does that then mean that I am a victim of racism because he's in far more powerful position than I am? Wait, so can you be racist against white people? No. Tatum? I say no. A little louder, I didn't. Sorry, no. Victoria? Oh, I thought, okay. Um, yes. I'm, you just skip You just skip the No, <laughs> absolutely not. No, of course. And in this context, you just saw a video where someone was saying something blatantly racist, and she's not going to lose her job or get castigated. Most people at this table agree with her. The difference is- I'm pretty sure they're talking about a clip that I must have skipped through since, again, this is five hours. Sorry. For, for white people, no one will do that. And then if it's a black person, there will be so much it's just, action. Yeah, it seems we just don't feel that bad for y'all after- Everything, it's, it's, you should feel bad for everybody because racism isn't a fair treatment. Think, oh, she was doing so well in other parts of the debate. No, now we have the whole like, well, I don't feel bad for them, for y'all. Please don't lump me in with like the slave owner, please. Okay, I, I'm not, okay. I, I literally, as a white person myself, I've only ever had one slave and I was also really nice to him and I let him go. So I, I don't appreciate being lumped in with these like serial enslavers. You guys don't really have to feel racism to the extent that people of color do. And you'll never understand it because you're not a person. Can we not please do this? All right, I'm going to be wrapping this up soon because this is actually painful. Of color, but even, period. Even, you won't get it. It's the same thing as you Michael, won't understand stuff that women yeah. have to deal with. The, and you, and we won't understand stuff that men have to I deal mean, with. That's it's like it, even it, the fact- Explain systemic racism. Like there's empiricism behind that. But you make the conversation nearly impossible to have, especially with a brain dead conservative like Knowles, when you say that you can't be racist towards white people. Just stop saying that dumb shit. Just shut the fuck up. Everybody knows what racism means, okay? Stop with this whole you can't be racist towards white people thing and just go into how, yeah, anybody can be racist towards anyone. Uh, however, when we're talking about systemic racism, that's usually carried out more so by powerful institutions in ways that are sometimes even unintentional. That's a conversation to have there about how black people are disproportionately negatively affected by the criminal justice system, for example. There's a conversation to have. There's empirical evidence of systemic racism in the criminal justice system, for example. But you lose the ability to even have that good conversation when you take the dumb route, okay? When you take the dumb white girl route of, well, you can't be racist towards white people, you see? The fact that you could see, like, I can give, giggle and laugh in a second, though, but, like, I'm, I don't care what anyone says. I could tell from seeing the table, we are the two most... POC color people yes. at the table, well, and you can sit and come have this conversation and laugh and giggle and have funny times. Yeah, yeah. This is not anything funny but, to but us right only, now. Yeah, please. Do it, please. No, now she just pulled out the I'm a brown girl card. 
Uh, uh. Okay, this is, by the way, why I said that uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to have some not very smart girls on here. So there you guys have it. That was Michael Knowles on this whatever podcast that went on for five hours. We watched it for like an hour, and I cannot even fathom watching this for five hours. That would actually be torturous. Not kidding. Like, it would actually be a violation of my constitutional rights because it would be deemed cruel and unusual punishment. But there you guys have it. Michael Knowles goes on the whatever podcast to talk to some uh, random layman chicks that they probably like took volunteers from the local community college and uh, they made some decent points and then really crumbled at the end. The racism talk really, it was like they were, they were doing decent, you know, okay. Having a little dips here and there. And then it was just like, all right, well, there you guys have it. Michael Knowles making some of the most brain dead, dumb fuck arguments imaginable. Uh, and unfortunately being met with some more brain dead, dumb fuck arguments. It's very sad. All right. Well, bye, Michael Knowles. I cannot take your face any longer.